This is Plant Based Briefing. Friends of Philip Fish Sanctuary by Cherie Hans at Main Street Vegan Academy at MainStreetVegan.com. And I'm Marian Erickson, and this is the curated content plant based podcast where I narrate a variety of articles on plant based and vegan living with permission in about 10 minutes or less every weekday. Today's article is from Main Street Vegan Academy. They're the premier training and certification program for vegan coaches. Their mission is to encourage the adoption and maintenance of a positive vegan lifestyle and a health-promoting diet geared to the needs and preferences of the individual for the purpose of creating a just world for all beings and protecting this planet. Founder Victoria Moran is an icon. She's been vegan since 1983 overcame a binge eating disorder, has written over a dozen books, has appeared on Oprah. She's amazing. So I recommend following Main Street Vegan Academy on social media as well. But now let's get to today's plant-based briefing. Friends of Philip Fish Sanctuary by Cherie Hans at MainStreetVegan.com. Many vegans care for our furry and feathered friends without thinking twice. We have nothing against fishes, but many of us do not give them as much attention as we do to other animals. A fish sanctuary is uncommon. Gwendolyn Church, the founder of the Friends of Philip Fish Sanctuary, admits that up front. I met Gwendolyn and learned of her aquarium fish sanctuary during a live Zoom with our henhouse flock, hosted by Jasmine Singer and Marianne Sullivan. I am a flock member, and a different guest is interviewed on the first Friday of each month. I've thought about fishes more compassionately after listening to Gwendolyn's mission. She says, when we think of the scale of harm in terrestrial animal farming, it is in the billions. For fishes, that number is in the trillions. Her fish rescue began with Philip. As Gwendolyn describes, there was one little guy in the back of the pet store shelf who was just super skinny and pale. His little fins were all just rotted away and gone, so it was clear that he was going to die. And so I pulled his fishbowl off the shelf and approached the manager to ask if I could take him home. They let me adopt him for free. Like so many rescues and sanctuaries, there are two primary sources for fish. They are either surrendered from pet stores or individual caregivers. Gwendolyn emphasized, we have a strict policy that we never purchase an animal, so we're not going to go to a pet store to buy a fish. She further states that most pet stores, whether large or small, do have a policy around sick animals and what they're allowed to do with them. They may not let you adopt them. The sanctuary itself is fairly small. We fit in that category of a micro-sanctuary, but the single room at my house has crept into other areas. Despite its size, Friends of Philip has over 20 species of fish. There are more than 33,000 different species worldwide. Fish in pet store tanks are subjected to overcrowding, filthy conditions, rampant disease, lack of enrichment, and or the ability to exercise and experience their natural behaviors. You have all these problems, and then on top of that, you have the problem of water quality. These fish are living in and breathing their waste, Gwendolyn told me. We know that land animals have feelings and experience pain. I assume that pescatarians think that fishes don't. However, Gwendolyn states that there is scientific evidence that fish are sentient. They do feel pain. Many fish have very long memories. I know enough as an animal lover not to eat fish. They bleed. They fight to survive when they're flopping around on someone's hook. Fishes have personalities and connect with their humans. Gwendolyn said, Most of our fishes, very quickly after arriving, recognize my fiancé and me. They'll respond specifically to us coming into the room to see them. Further, fishes have the ability to play and learn both independently and from others. They form strong social bonds, and one species, the cleaner wrasse, recently passed the mirror test, the gold standard for determining if an animal is self-aware, she told me. Gwendolyn says, fish are hardly even considered a pet. Many people want an aquarium because they want a beautiful thing to look at. Most people, hopefully who adopt a dog, want a companion animal, but many who purchase fishes don't have that motivation. Just like our other animal friends, fish need love and care too. It is easy to focus on someone we can pet and kiss rather than our scaled friends in the water. I applaud Gwendolyn's effort to rescue fish and enlighten us all about these incredible animals who need our love and support. If you wish to help, here's the link for Friends of Philip Patreon. You just listened to Friends of Philip Fish Sanctuary by Cherie Hans at MainStreetVegan.com. And I've heard Gwendolyn on a number of different podcasts, and her story is amazing the way these fishes recover and respond. And then if you Google 
how betta fish are captured and what their lives are like before and after being captured and imprisoned in pet stores. It's just horrific. I'll put a link to a PETA article and a short video that'll open your eyes significantly. But I'll put the links to the Friends of Philip Fish Sanctuary social media in the show notes. And I've done a number of other episodes on fish or fishes. And the best way to find them, because there's over a dozen, I may not link them all in the show notes, but wherever you listen, if you don't have a search feature, simply go to plantbasedbriefing.com, click on episodes, and there's a really quick search feature right there. So please share this episode with anyone who might benefit, and thanks for listening.